This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Well, come on along and welcome aboard to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals here on this Tuesday, April 14th. Welcome along. Todd Larry is here as well. Jake's at the wheel. Hope your, uh, your day's off to a good start. Plenty to get to. Todd, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. I'm great. What, what day is it? Uh, where are we at? I don't know. We should, we should even bother what the point is. Yeah, what, where, why am I here? What are we doing? It's just a nor- another portal day. It's nuts. We're, we're, we're going to have to create our own portal. Uh, on the program today, though, Taylor Lehman from uh, Indiana Rivals. We're going to talk some recruiting. Chronic Hoosier will be along, uh, hopefully. And Angelo Pizzo, creator of, of Hoosiers. Speaking of movies, we always say we're seems like we're living in a movie. We well, There's got to be a movie coming out of this or yeah, several. There'll be about ten, yeah, there'll be about ten, but... No, I, I'm interested to find out how the Chinese Rudy is progressing. You know, uh, that's funny. Uh, uh, Bill Maher is a big time. I know we don't do politics, but he's a big time like Democrat kind of a guy. But he had a thing out yesterday that sounded like so undemocrat. I'm like, wow, talking about how people are getting offensive that, that if they call it like the Chinese a virus or whatever right. yeah. saying it's racist when it's like bull crap. He goes, go back and look at every single virus, the Ebola virus. That's a place. The Zika virus. That's a place. All these things, Spanish flu. That's a place. All these, all these things that are all named for the places they originated. Every one of them. And that's where it originated. It originated in China. So, and that's not the first one that originated in China. Apparently it, it shocks me at what, what offends people and what, what levels of, idiocy people can get to by uh, <laughs> worrying about some of the what, what people are called and and that was his I, whole point what, and it was great you know who had the best attitude about anything to deal with with i guess inappropriate ways of referring to people the girl slash now boy on tiger king when they were saying were you upset at the fact that they were calling <laughs> you a she the whole time and she or he was like no, but yeah, you guys all worried about that a lot more than I did. I, I didn't really care. Yeah. Like, how, how do we get somebody on Tiger King that has a better attitude about things than and more 99% sense. of the population? And more common sense. It's embarrassing. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is a wealthy, wealthy man now. Uh, running backs do not generally get paid. Uh, I mean, not compared to, say, quarterbacks or whatever, but he's had a new deal, man. $16 million a year average. Uh, 60 is 70 like worth like 75 million dollars how many so, yeah how many years was it it was it's only for like six years or something yeah, it's a nice say, that, that's a long time for court or for running backs i mean those yeah, guys that you that's, a, that's about, a career right there baby <laughs> i'm surprised it's not the opposite i'm surprised running backs aren't the highest paid because their career length has to be about the shortest of yeah they take position. a beating oh my gosh uh madison norris a defensive lineman for indiana from uh, hamilton southeastern hits the transfer portal for indiana football um, never had, hadn't played yet a much Madison, uh, was just putting weed, weight on and getting ready to probably going to expecting to play this season, but, uh, a lot of action going on. So, uh, he's moving around, but nothing gigantic. Paul Logan, uh, the athletic director from Warren central, um, North, central. North central, North central rather, um, the lights on all the football stadiums yesterday. Very, very cool tribute for him again as, uh, he lost his battle to coronavirus, but uh, it's very cool to see uh, the touching tributes to him around the state. You can tell how many lives he impacted. I mean, when you've got schools from the very northern and southern parts of the state paying a tribute to it like that, that's obviously a big deal. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Fossey, you know, the, of coronavirus fame, he's got a beer named after him now from some, some brewer in, in Georgia. Fossey Spring. <laughs> Fossey Spring Beer. Uh, it, everybody's obviously losing their mind. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do something. But the one thing that did not go over, and I mean at all, was that NBA horse thing that they were gonna do on. on 
Man, all, I didn't see it, but all I saw was everybody commenting on Twitter saying, yeah, no, nope, done, I'm out. I tried to give it a chance, but uh, nope, not happening. I accidentally flipped the channel by <laughs> it for 10 seconds, and it was so painful. It, it was Trey Young and somebody, I don't even know who it was. I went by so fast. But the only reason it stayed on so long is because I couldn't flip the channel off fast enough. I I hit the guide instead, and it just stayed on there for too long. Like, it was the most painful thing. I'd rather watch my two next door neighbors play horse. I've already, I've so already talked about. I've already talked about NASCAR, right? Uh, nope. Oh, we did not bring it up, Kyle Larson. You know, it's funny. NASCAR is getting more attention now than when they were actually running. They're running these i racing series is right now a week ago Bubba Wallace uh, gets mad because he got wrecked in a race in our race and he gets mad and he quit well a sponsor for that race tweeted out and fired him saying we want racers not quitters well then this past weekend Kyle Larson another young, uh, young upcoming driver got mad and used a racial slur but it was not directed towards anyone but it doesn't matter he thought he was on a private channel and to his spotter trying to reach him and he said, hey, and he just has it, said the word, and boom. But uh, it was not are, are out these on guys, a private channel. Are these guys getting paid? Is there prize money? I bet that they're, I'm sure they're these? with sponsors. Yeah, they got sponsors and everything. Well, if they're not donating it to charity, then they deserve to That's be true. kicked That's off or idea. done whatever is going I on. Agree. I mean, I agree. A thousand if they're percent. taking that that seriously, it, it should be for fun and for charity. Like If they're seriously doing that for actual money, that's a joke. Uh, Alan says, good morning, fellas. Can you, can Archie get Kaufman to B-Town or will Matt the Brat whisk him away to Boilerville? <laughs> what was that? He says, uh, can Archie get Kaufman, Trey Kaufman oh, to B-Town gotcha. or will Matt the Brat whisk him away to Boilerville? Yeah, I mean, hey, how, that's similar, a, how similar are he and Caleb first? I don't see none. I mean, no, Caleb first plays inside more, but... Um, but still, I, I just don't see Terry Kaufman at Purdue. You know, I, you think back at Purdue and the Purdue, Purdue type players, I, I don't see him there, man. Yeah. Um, I, I see him going to Indiana, to be honest with you, because for one thing, half his dang on Indiana he, teammate is already there. Yeah. And, and I, like truly based on proximity, I mean, he's probably much more likely IU or Louisville, isn't he? Yeah, I would think. I would think. I mean, Louisville, obviously, a uh, program that, that has not wavered much during this. So there's a draw in and of itself. And it's so close to him. I mean, it's right. it's it's closer to him than, than half the kids that live in Louisville. I mean, right. he's only 20 minutes away, maybe, uh, from the UofL campus. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be a tough out. But Louisville's, you know, they're, they've signed quite a few guys, too. But uh, I, I think Indiana has an advantage with the guys that they have gotten that, that he's played with. I, I think that there's something to that. And plus, you know, we had uh, uh, Anthony Leal on yesterday and we had uh, Dunk, Logan Duncan on before, both of them saying that they're both recruiting. So uh, you got guys that are already there recruiting them. That's, it, it's a tough pull. I mean, you, you, you're a former player. What would it be like if you were in that situation where the guys you all played IAU with, they all went to, well, we'll use Indiana for an example, and you were not, you know, leaning any particular way. That's got to be a, a, a kind of a draw, I would think. It is. Well, anyone who has gone off to college, forget the athletic aspect of it, but anyone who's gone off to college, you know, I mean – you know, I, I went to Lawrence North. I knew there was a bunch of people going to IU. I knew a bunch of people there. I know other people from North Central that were all going to IU. I mean, I knew I kind of had a a friend group already kind of going. Um, but still, there's that, you know, there's that level of the unknown, and, and it's something different, and you're away from home. And there's just a, you know, there's some anxiety that goes along with that tra- that transition. But when you look at the fact of, oh, my gosh, I, I know my, not only do I know my roommate, but I've roomed with him on the road for two years in AAU or whatever the case may be, or, or, you know, I know four or five guys that I'm going to be around all the time. I mean, I can tell you, I was rooming with Greg Graham and I had played against Greg Graham a bunch. Um, but I, I mean, I didn't really know him that well. And, you know, we had even played AAU together and I really didn't know him that well. So there was still a level of anxiety when it came to it. There, there's a big difference between going there, especially especially when it's guys you like. I mean, you know, you play <laughs> AAU. They play so many games today in AAU. 
you've got to like the guys that you're playing with because you spend an enormous amount of time with them. Yeah, and uh, hopefully that, that that'll carry over. Yeah, you 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 should think that that would continue to snowball and and you know last for several years because these guys have all played together. It's like Christian Lander played up. It's not unusual for guys to play up a year and all that. So even when they don't, they practice together a lot. So you know, Kaufman's probably played with Galloway and Leal and those guys. I mean, at least at least in some scrimmages and things like that. So it's. I, I, there's no way it can't help. Now, it doesn't mean anything. I was a prime example. I mean, I, I begged and would have done anything for Montrose to go to IU, but, you know, it just it wasn't going to happen. I mean, he was going out of state for one. He was not going to the University of Michigan. And, you know, his dad and Coach Knight just did not – Would it was oil and water. Those two would have not, <laughs> would have not worked out. That's – what's that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have enough time to talk about that and give it its full due. Uh, I guess we kind of have to. So let's do that. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, um, Mark Cuban and, and and John Calipari were on a, a a podcast or whatever it was together. Anyway, they're together and they're talking about Mark Cuban's trying to do his best to get the Indiana Kentucky series revamped. And you could tell Calipari wants nothing to do with it. He well, he wants to do a, a charity game in Dallas, something that's not going to happen. But you can tell he just. Yeah, whatever. Here, here you go. Bringing back the Indiana Kentucky rivalry. Everybody yes, yes. I'm negotiating right now, Cal. Let's do okay. this. Okay. How about we play it in your building? Done. I offered two years in Indianapolis, and they said no. You know, I can't. I can't speak for Fred or now whoever's taking his place. Um, but at the same time, with all this stuff going on, I think close proximity is going to be important so that we don't have to get in planes and drive somewhere or fly somewhere. We just drive. So I say we just flip a coin. And and how about, let me go back. My people go crazy because I, but maybe we do something for charity in your building. You mean in Dallas? Yeah. Or in Bloomington? No, your building. You have a building. I have a building. But Cal, I'm talking about now, right? I'm saying, you know what? As exactly. we try to transition out of this, we need to get those first games. And, you know, um, Lexington and Bloomington are so close. We, we hop everybody. We flip a coin, decide where the game is played that way. We get on buses. We take the buses right to where whichever stadium, whichever right. arena. And then we just throw the ball up with fans or without, made for TV. If the NCAA doesn't want to go for it, I'll figure it out. I'll get us the TV partner. Or you have your TV partners. IU's got theirs. Let's just do this, right? Let's just be that first game. <laughs> coming out for college athletics that gets the ball rolling. Exactly. <laughs> Calipari wanted nothing to do with that. Every time he threw something out, he would kind of tweak it in a different direction. Every I, time. Want to go, I want to go back to the beginning where he said, I offered two years in Indianapolis. Yeah. I, I, like, I want to hear – no, no, no. That you is can't true. just throw that statement out. I want to hear it. Like, what well, that was, was actually offer? true. I think that was true. He wanted – they were still wanting to, to to keep the games on campus, and he allegedly offered to play it two years in Indianapolis before coming back to Louisville. Uh, but they wanted it on campus, and he, you know, doesn't like doing that because he likes to mitigate any advantage he can uh, against teams like that. And so he he just said no, and they're they're not going to play. I don't well, think as well, long as I'm, he's there. Here's here's what I don't understand with that is. I, I've been in Rupp Arena. I've been to Lexington. I, there's no advantage that Indiana has over Rupp Arena. There's no avan- advantage Rupp Arena has over Indiana. Oh, no, I mean, no, no. Are, he just coming to coming to Bloomington he, Bloomington, he would be at a disadvantage, and he tries to eliminate any disadvantage he's at whatsoever. And so that's I, – you, you, I don't think you'll ever – you'll never see Kentucky in Assembly Hall as long as Calipari's there. And I, do, I honestly – I do not care that that's the fact at all. I mean – I don't understand why we wouldn't play. There has to be a reason, and I, which I just don't know what it is. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, at this I point, that, I think I, everybody's in the same thing. Be, it was a here's here's what here's what Coach Knight did, and, and I'll tell you why this was, in my opinion, smart. Is he took that game and played it in a venue that we were going to play a possible NCAA event in. Well, that's Calipari's rule. That's his reasoning. That's well, uh, why would you? He that said that. So, 
Josh, um, I hate to agree with anything well, he at, says. At but. Stage, I mean, I agree that I'm like, dude, whatever. Just get the stinking series back together, guys. So, uh, yeah. But it was it was cool to see. But Mark Cuban was down. He was just like, no, 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 hold on. Let's just let's do this now. Let's get this going. And he kept trying to get the back, and then Calipari didn't want anything to do with it. So well, yeah. Well, good. you know how Cuban is. I mean, he 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 doesn't he doesn't plan for the future. I mean, he wants he wants it to happen now. He can do it now too. He can, yeah. Right. So he was trying to be pragmatic. Like, Let's get on by. If Calipari wants to do some charity. Why do you want to fly two whole groups of people, you know, all that distance away, wasting all that money? What? There, there's your charity money. Just do it at home. Do it in Louisville, wherever, Indianapolis. Yeah, there is. It doesn't make any sense to go do it in Dallas. That uh, that's silly. But oh, it's just a way for Calipari to poop it. Yeah. Yep, it ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Uh, Ryan from uh, Michigan hit the text line. I watched the horse challenge since I was starving for basketball, as you know. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, yeah, that's it. We got a lot coming up on the program today. Taylor Lehman from Indiana Rivals. We're going to talk recruiting. Chronic Hoosier is going to be here. And Angelo Pizzo. Let's see what movie we can come up with. Man, maybe we can get some parks in a movie. I, I would. That would be the coolest thing in the world to be in a movie. I mean, not even be a star. Just be in the movie. One line. <laughs> I don't care. One line. You need a speaking line? You need Just one that, word. I don't what, care if you what, say, hey, I can it. just have one and it'd be cool. We got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Powered by Rivals. We're back with Taylor Lehman right after this. Yes. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. 
Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle here coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals here on this Tuesday. Joined now by Taylor Lehman from Indiana Rivals. Taylor, how you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you doing, Jim? Cannot complain, man. Uh, you stay insane uh, during this crazy, crazy time. <laughs> it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough, but no, staying busy with uh, with all these commitments, man. It's uh, it's it's been it's been fun, honestly. I was gonna say the one saving grace is they they're keeping us busy out there uh, here of late. And Indiana <laughs> and Tom Allen and staff have been man, they've been at it. Yeah, I mean they really have. It's kind of a trend in college football um, right now, you know kids they 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 weren't able to make those visits to campuses um and then here i believe it's uh in the next couple of days yeah tomorrow, tomorrow would have been the first day of the evaluation period where coaches could go out and uh and actually ev- evaluate the players um but none of that's going to be happening so players just feel like you know i like this one program a lot based on the visits that i take into them early in the process i feel like pulling the trigger and a lot of them have done that especially in state guys i think that uh, this may be an instance where tom allen has an advantage because we've seen what he can do from a recruiting standpoint with with nothing you know behind it as far as successful years of being head coach hadn't been there yet so uh but that may be an advantage for him during a time like this yeah tom allen's really shined during the coronavirus honestly um he he has he has a lot of connections in Indiana and and they've really um they, they they've really shown in in this last month. I mean Indiana had four commitments in April and um you know he's if if there is a prospect in the state of Indiana, Tom Allen is involved in the recruitment. And so I mean when when you look at the guys that have committed, um Vinny Feikable, I mean he he always kind of seemed like if given an offer from Indiana, he was probably going to commit to Indiana fairly soon afterwards, and that's exactly what happened. Um, and then guys like Aaron Steinfeld, um, Aaron Steinfeld, actually, that, I think that was the one that Tom Allen was least involved with. Um, Nick Sheridan was, was pretty, pretty involved there. And from the, from the beginning and, um, Aaron Steinfeld actually, you know, he grew up in Bloomington, so he had wanted to play for Indiana football. He'd been around the program a lot, but guys like Cooper Jones and Rodney McGraw, um, those two guys, they really like Tom Allen. And, uh, I mean, I think those two guys are the ones that stand out as far as the in-state commitments. So, um, yeah, no, Tom Allen, Tom Allen's, uh, definitely gained some, uh, I guess, faith from, from the fan base, especially on recruiting front. Yeah. I mean, Todd, we're talking earlier, especially and Todd noticed that it, that's been such an influx of offensive linemen, whether it's been offers or commitments, both either way, they're really working on shoring that up. Of course, that's a few years out, uh, but that's obviously a point of interest. Yeah, yeah. It's, as far as offensive linemen go, I'm not sure how many they're going to bring in in the, in the 2021 class because I, I know they like Josh Sales from Brownsburg, um, and I think he likes them too. But I think um, you know they, they brought in seven guys, seven contributors in the in the in the 2020 class. Um, you know, I think if they bring in Josh Sales and, and maybe one other, and depending on how things happen, you know, af, after the the 2020 uh, season, then you know maybe they look at bringing in transfers. I know they're in, I know they're in the market for a transfer offensive lineman right now, preferably a tackle. So, um, you know, that, that would mean eight, they, they would have brought in eight. So it's going to be a really small class in 2021. Um, but I think if they can bring in Josh sales, I don't think it's going to be easy, but if they can, um, I think that's, that's kind of a win for the program. There you go, Todd. Uh, no, another lineman they're looking at bringing in. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. He was talking about uh, knowing some some kids that play, and and it just with football, it's such a when they come in a freshman, so not not too many freshmen or sophomores are going to play as a lineman. They got to get beefed up and, and into the system. But man, they're sure bringing a lot of those guys in. Yeah, I mean, there's also uh, also I know that there's one from <laughs> one hits pretty pretty close to home for you, Jim. But uh, Zim Mikulski, um Oh yeah, he's, yeah. He's another one. A lot of size. He got an offer from Duke yesterday. So, yeah, he's he's kind of – Louisville seems to be his leader right now, but I know he really, really likes Indiana. So that's just a matter of time on, on his front, too. 
Yeah, especially I think uh, right now the ACC, we saw that conference, this basically is, they stunk. They were terrible last year in the Big Ten, uh, just really, really strong. I think that works uh, uh, for recruits as well. I mean, for someone like Mikowski, who's looking at multiple uh, programs and multiple conferences, uh, man, there's no comparison right now between those two. Right, yeah. No, I, actually, I've gotten a lot of that. I know um, there's some there's some guys down in the South that I've talked to that – are interested in Indiana and it's actually because they're in the big 10 and that, that kind of, kind of surprised me. And, and I know that, uh, that the ACC, yeah, like you said, they, they weren't great. Even the SEC, they, they kind of had a down year in, the, in 2019. So, um, big, the big 10, I mean, they're kind of, they're riding some momentum right now. And, and right now, I mean, the 2019 season is, is really kind of living on throughout this coronavirus recruitment dead period. What are some names that uh, people may be hearing soon that we haven't heard a lot of? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, you mean as far as like the 2021 class and recruiting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, there, obviously there's Donovan McCauley. We've heard plenty of him, the quarterback from Lawrence North. Um, I watched him play in the sectional championship against Warren Central. He's, his skill set is just, it's jaw topping. Just, you know, what, what potential he has at the next level. It's, he's a, he's a hell of an athlete, but, um, Kyron Montgomery, he's another one. Um, and then Austin Booker, those are two defensive ends in, in Indiana. Indiana has a really strong defensive end class in 2021. Um, even though they're going to have a small class, I think they're going to look to bring in all four of those defensive ends, um, and, and just make room for them somewhere. But, uh, then I guess, uh, Caleb Edwards, Caleb Edwards is one that a lot of people don't really know about, but he's their top safety prospect. Um, and he's out of Georgia. He's um he was he's like six five two hundred or not six five six foot two hundred pounds. Um, and he's uh, he he's a heck of an athlete too. He's he's one of those guys where um I think he might be a little bit underrated. But then uh, Willie Shaw, Willie Shaw is a running back out of the Chicago area. Um, he went to Brother Rice, which is the same high school as uh, Nick Morozas, uh, the offensive tackle. And uh, he's he's like a he's around like a top 20 running back in the class and he's really interested in Indiana too. Um, so I would say mainly those guys, um, there are some other ones here and there that, that might pop up, but I think those guys are kind of the top targets at, at the moment. And they're still trying to develop some relationships electronically, but it's all going to, they're just really going to try to, to lock in those guys that they were able to bring to campus or even visit before, the dead period happened, and, and I think that's kind of where everybody's at at the moment. And you mentioned all those D, D linemen or uh, DVNs coming in. Uh, Madison Norris, one who is from Hamilton Southeastern in Indianapolis, who they had kind of been grooming uh, uh, a redshirt sophomore, getting some weight on him, hits the transfer portal. A little surprising, but uh, not really in this day and age. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was a little unfortunate because i know when he came in i was really excited to see what he could do i mean he won the the 110 meter hurdles state championship in indiana and as a defensive end and you don't see a lot of big guys doing that um so he he always seemed like he had the size um to potentially add some some weight but there was also i mean there were a lot of question marks there about whether he could add the weight to to play defensive end and go against big 10 offensive tackles every every play so um no, it was, it was one of those things where he, I mean, he, I think he gained 17 pounds total in uh, in two years. So he 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 was it, it was it was tough, and I think um, you know it also with with the added depth that Indiana has a defensive end, and, and they keep bringing in. It's going to be a big 2021 defensive end class too. Um, a lot of people were saying, you know, was this something where um, Indiana knew that Madison Norris was transferring, so they were you know, recruiting these defense events from the beginning for 2021. And I don't think that was the case. I think it's, uh, I think that was, I think, I think Madison Norris, I, I think that was completely unrelated, but, uh, but, and I don't think Indiana is going to be hurting for defensive ends in the future. And uh, unfortunately, um, Madison Norris, you know, I hope he finds a place where he can kind of develop as a defensive end, because I, I'm, I'm just really excited to see him on a football field. I think he's going to do a lot of good things. Yeah, he's a great athlete, and uh, he'll he'll end somewhere uh, without doubt. Uh, <clears throat> but and but on the basketball side of things, I know you've been working so much on football and just but basketball wise, man, they we saw Charles Menlin uh, end up at Louisville. But I you know I talked to Jake Weingarten the other day. I don't know how much I'm, I'm sure Indiana maybe wanted him, but there's not really room if Christian Lander is going to get reclassified because they'll be out of scholarships. Uh, so that wasn't a big loss, and they're really looking towards uh, 2021 now. I think. Just understanding kind of recruiting 
at a college level um, overall. I, I think it's always good to have options if something falls through. And to me, the, and I, I don't have any inside information on that at all, on the initial intent of getting involved with Charles Midland. But I, to me, that kind of seemed like a situation where Indiana was like, you know, this lander, you know, it, it's not official. You know, the lander reclassifying to 2020, yeah, it's probably going to happen, but it's not official. And until it's official, teams and whether you're recruiting for football basketball baseball softball it it doesn't really matter you want backup plans because if you have one plan and one plan only and then it falls through then you know what are you going to do at that point so it always kind of seemed like a you know a a backup option but then once once transfers are committing you know they're i mean they're dropping like flies out there and um and charles menlin sees that and then louisville comes along chris mack is like hey we want you He's like, okay, what's the downside of going to Louisville right now if they if they know that they want me right now? So that was my kind of outside interpretation of that. But you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think a lot of people were uh, were, were were reacting um, as if you know Charles Menlo was like a top priority for Indiana. And I just I just don't think that was ever the case. I think you're exactly right, Taylor. Uh, make sure you follow Taylor on Twitter or, or uh, at uh, in, with Indiana Rivals, of course, uh, doing a tremendous job as always. I can't thank you enough, brother. We'll I'll do this again next week. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, Jim. Thanks for having me on. You betcha. Enjoy yourself. Have a great day. There's Taylor Lehman from Indiana Rivals joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat uh, with Coyle and Leary. We've got Chronic Hoosier coming up yet, and also Angelo Pizzo is going to join us here on the program today. So stay tuned. We've got lots more coming up from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. 
Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Hall, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. with Corey Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by Rivals. Welcome in. Chronic Hoosier, sir. How are you, man? I am doing well, man. Glad to be back. Just got done uh, got done doing some Krogering, uh, which is always kind of an adventure in the week now. So uh, we survived it and uh, back in the friendly confines of home. Kroger. What percentage of people had masks on? I'll tell you what, this was the one time where it felt like the overwhelming majority of people were masked up and gloved up. Um, I think every staff worker I encountered was was protected, but you know, at least three and four of the customers were as well. Uh, they still don't act like they uh, they know what they're doing when it comes to distancing, and, and you know people still deal with some emotions, uh, not handling it so well, I'd say. But other than that, it was good. Solid. The assistant women's coach Liz Hodinger, uh, she was all safe, so it was good to see her even uh, even through the mask. She's hard to miss. She's a big lady. Yeah, I, my only venture away uh, uh, from this, I'm quickly getting past that. Uh, I, my only ventures out in the last six weeks have been to Kroger, three trips to Kroger. And the first time out, Todd, I did not have a mask on, but it I, I felt so bad. I'm like, oh, by gosh, next time I went in, I had one on. And so, I went, yeah, I went yesterday and I was surprised. I don't have a mask, but I was surprised. I, I, quickly will make one up because I was the vast, I was the majority or minority for sure. Cause everyone had a mask on. It seemed like probably eight out of 10 people at least had masks on. So I was impressed with that. Like maybe we can get a basketball game up with everybody wearing some masks or something. Yeah, that, you know, terrible. that's the thing. And people talk about all these workarounds, you know, just from a practical standpoint, I mean, it's not easy to breathe. I mean, if you're wearing a properly fitted one that's got the right filtration and everything, you know, I wear glasses. Well, I, I have glasses and contacts. Uh, they say you need to cover your eyes now. So I've been rocking the glasses. Um, they fog up real easy, you know, so it can be there's there's a lot of uh, logistical challenges to, to the PPE that we're faced with. So, you know, huge shout out to all the healthcare workers, I suppose, that are doing this every single day, even before the pandemic under these conditions and and doing it at a high level, but you know, it's, 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 it's funny because I think just two weeks ago, you know, people that were, that were protected, you know, that were masked up, gloved up, were definitely the outliers, but you know, the, uh, the anxiety has been there for a minute. So the time before last, I was in Kroger, my daughter's like myself, she's dealing with Indiana allergies. You know, it's that time of year where it's just really kicking your butt. And she, uh, she cleared her throat a couple of times and she was getting some real nasty looks so after the, the third time my son recognized that, you know, she's getting a little self-conscious about it. So the next time it happened and you know, this old guy gave her a real, real crappy look, he looked over and said, cut her some slack, man. It's not Corona. She just got eight. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> and, you know, oh, he backed off real quick. So th- oh, there are some man. other ways that you can keep social distance that, you know, that don't require PPE. Yeah, it was a funny time. I'm just using a bandana, but uh, yeah, it, it, hopefully we'll at some point we'll get back to uh, to normal, which I'm sure we will. I, I know that uh, there's a lot of talk of Indiana getting close to reaching its peak, which means we're on the back side. It doesn't mean it's over, just on the back side of it. So, uh, you know, I've got a daughter that's that's going to be a senior in high school, and and it's and Todd's got a son that's going to be a senior. And I, that that starts to sink in. I'm like, I'm like, golly, because she's play soccer and they have an incredible soccer team coming back this season i'm like she said she broke down the other day and started crying just thinking the possibility of not getting to play this year and i'm like wow uh let's hope that that stuff doesn't happen which I, i'm pretty confident it's we're going we're, we'll find a way to make stuff happen no matter what yeah it's you know it's it's amazing just how widespread the sacrifices are in this thing and you know these are the things that we've we've been taught since we were young if you put in the work um you know, if you trust the process, if you follow it, you take the steps, uh, that there's rewards to come. And, you know, there's an entire generation now who has been brought up on that, who's excelled in that. And right when they get to the finish line, it's, it, it gets taken away. You know, they just, they stop the competitions. And, 
uh, it's tragic. It's, it's extremely unfortunate. Um, it's also perhaps one of the best life lessons that sports ever taught us because nothing's guaranteed. Uh, there's not a thing in this world, not even tomorrow, uh, is, is guaranteed for any of us. So it, it's tough, man. I'm in, I'm, I'm dealing with that with my own kids right now. It seems like every day there's a new cancellation that continues to cascade and, uh, and just, you know, the reality sets in even deeper and stings a little bit harder. Uh, but you know, like you said, man, we're going to pull through this. Uh, and I think we're going to come out, we're going to come out a lot stronger. And, you know, if there's any luck, I think a lot of us are going to be, uh, a, a lot more fortunate and uh, thankful for what we do have, uh, not the least of which the time we get to spend together. Yeah, I don't think there's any – you make a really, really good point in, in when you say it that way because we talk so many times about, you know, you're never, you're never guaranteed tomorrow. And most of the time you're kind of referring to – you know, it's said a lot at funerals or you're referring to life and death in those scenarios. But you're right. It's kind of the same way when you're talking about athletics. I mean, these guys have worked so hard at something and – um and then, you know, there, there's no promise you're going to get to play tomorrow. And, and that's a – it's a, a much smaller, <laughs> obviously, issue than life and death. But it's still a big issue when you talk about these kids' lives. And, you know, I cannot I, – I know, I know the amount of effort I put into my, you know, my high school career. And, it, and we won the state championship my senior year. I kind of had a storybook ending to my, my, college, or my high school career. And, you know, had that been – jerked away and taken away like for Anthony Leal and Trey Galloway and these guys right now I mean that's a that would be a big deal and it would definitely be a life lesson that uh you know that you can learn something from and these guys you know they didn't really have a choice or they definitely didn't have a choice obviously it's something that that they are just gonna have to deal with and get over but I I saw a thing and what made me think about it is I saw a thing from uh Bob Huggins yesterday where he was talking about let's start next year's basketball season off with like a version of the NCAA tournament with the 64 teams that would have been in and all that. And I'm just like, you know what, at some point you just have to basically say, Hey, it's very unfortunate. It sucks. It's a terrible situation, but we just got to move on and, and, <laughs> and deal with it the way we best way we can. I, th- I thought that was a terrible suggestion and solution for him <laughs> to come. I mean, you're, you're putting up your, I mean, you just, it's just impossible to do it that way. Sometimes you just got to accept it's a sucky situation and, and deal with it. And, and I, I, I don't know. So I know some people, everybody's getting a little crazy brained being stuck inside all the time, but I, some of the things people throw out are just stupid. Well, and I, I think that, you know, this is, this is kind of like, you know, going, everybody is going through their own stages of grief with this adjustment period. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's understandable. A lot are still kind of in that shock and denial phase. Um, you know, this can't be happening. There's, there's gotta be, there's some magic bullet that makes everything normal again, or, you know, the end of the tunnel can miraculously just be right around the corner. Uh, even though, you know, in all reality, uh, as everybody's speculating about, you know, when college sports starts up and, and what, when can they start the basketball season? And, you know, can we get the tournament in this year and stuff like that? You know, I, I hate to break it to a lot of folks, but I, I've yet to see a coherent plan <laughs> that gets us, you know, to the point that we can all congregate, uh, even in you know semi-small numbers again. Uh, not to mention, start packing stadiums of a hundred plus thousand uh, at least safely. And this is this is one of the uh, the, the periods right now where there's going to be some some choices, and we're going to have to balance a lot of uh, often competing interests. But you know, as it relates to uh, interscholastic athletics, and I say that meaning college and high school. Um, I, I think it's important for people to keep in mind, and this is one thing that a lot of us are guilty of losing sight of. These aren't professional athletes. You know, they have not contracted uh, for certain, you know, benefits in exchange for for things that they're going to give up. Elwood, shut up. Um, <laughs> squirrel <laughs> alert. That's the problem right now, man. These deer Did are taking up. They think that they Did run the Elwood? roost. Is my his name Elwood? Happy in- with their newfound freedom. But no, what I'm saying is, you know, people got to take care of, of students. Um, and you know, we, we, a lot of people kind of mock the term student athlete, but there's a reason the student comes first, uh, because these are kids and it's, it's up to the grown ups to take care of their well being and make sure that safety is paramount in everything they do. And, you know, I, I know there was a lot of, a lot of beliefs and conceptions early on that this was just a type of uh, a disease that, you know, the primarily afflicted older folks or people that were compromised in other ways, but that's proven not to be the case. Um, a lot of young, a lot of strong people 
have fallen ill and, and some have unfortunately succumbed to it. So uh, we're going to have to keep that in mind as we, as we chart the path forward that, you know, these, these are not only our kids, man, this is our future at stake right now. You know, yeah, uh, one of the things I know that's, that's happening here at the university is as they're trying to figure out how, how we do move forward. We also have to recognize we're reinforcing the front lines with the, uh, with the doctors and the nurses and the scientists and, you know, the people working on public policy and, and all of the, the future generation who's going to guide us through the end of this and then into the next one and the one after that. So, uh, it, it's certainly been a, a perspective shifting event for a lot of folks. And it's been, a it's been pretty remarkable to see how it's happening in our own little world here in Bloomington, uh, as it intersects with the university and, and all that entails. But, uh, you know, I, I keep having to remind my kids as dark as it seems, there's never been a better time uh, in the history of mankind to tackle something like this. We've got so much knowledge. We have so much, so many tools and technology at our disposal. Um, and, you know, here locally, we've got some of the brightest minds in the world that are, uh, are going to knock this thing out for us. And they'll get us back on the court soon enough when it's safe for everybody. Speaking of getting back on the court, Mark Cuban uh, tr- was doing his best to get Indiana and Kentucky back on the court. We played a clip earlier where him and uh, John Calipari had an exchange yesterday where he was doing his best to get that thing back up and running, but you could tell Calipari really didn't want anything to do with it. But, man, oh, man, that that's something that just – it has to happen, uh, Chronic. I mean, I don't care what they do. I don't care where they play it. It has to happen. Well, you know, we talk about shifting per- uh, perceptions and in, in what the new reality looks like, you know, it, Calipari for the life of him has never understood that this is bigger than just him. And I think you saw it in the way he was deflecting yesterday with cubes talking about doing it for charity, whatever. One, I think it's BS too. I think even in his, his fainted um, concession to cubes, he's afraid to do it for real uh, because he feels that the risk to his ego is too great. Uh, He's seen what can happen. He understands the power of this rivalry. Uh, but unfortunately, I think he fears his boys don't understand it quite as well as ours do, uh, and that there's some sort of a, an, an unfair advantage that Indiana has in that series, um, even if it's played, you know, uh, in a rotating home home neutral setup. He's he's just never going to let his ego get out of way out of the way of, of letting that series resume, and it's it's unfortunate. And you know, I think it's it's hopefully we'll give you know cooler heads a chance to reflect on this when this is all said and done and what does matter going forward and you know uh this is one of the greatest basketball rivalries in the world and it's only been halted because of his ego quite honestly and i don't care what else what other excuses they've offered up over the time there's there's no getting around his ego is the only thing stopping this uh it's great for the schools it's great for the sport of basketball um it's obviously great for the networks um everybody wants this to happen but john calipari and you know unfortunately he's he's a guy that has decision making authority over who they schedule uh I, I just wish he could maybe have a change of heart and recognize what he's depriving not just his his team but his state his fan base uh and quite honestly his neighbors and all of this because it's kind of like the iu purdue rivalry it's what makes it so great is this is a blood feud if you will that goes back generations uh, and you know, it's great when you can, you can have a rivalry like that with your neighbor, but also recognize that, you know, we're, we, we cooperate a whole lot more than we compete together. And if we can celebrate some of the, the competition, uh, it, it just brings us closer. So hopefully someday soon, it doesn't seem like it's happening, uh, anytime under Calipari's watch, unfortunately. No, I, I, let's, we all hope that. I mean, Todd took place in that series. I mean, Todd, can you imagine not having that series, especially at that time? Because uh, both programs were just, as always, on, on top of the college world. And it's always a special event uh, to watch that game. Well, I mean, you know, we, we truly used it for a, um, you know, an experience level perspective. And the game, the atmosphere of the game was just different being in the, you know, Hoosier Dome at that it's time. The dome, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we, it was going to be a venue that if, if we didn't play an NCAA tournament game in there, it was going to be real similar. I mean, you know, we played in the Final Four in Minneapolis, and a lot of the different places we played in NCAA tournament games were in those large dome situations. And so it, they gave us that opportunity. And you know how big Coach Knight was on, you know, trying to replicate what it was going to be like, you know, it, for the NCAA tournament games. And that was – that was a big deal to us. I mean, we talked about it. It wasn't like we just, you know, we had to just come to the conclusion on our own. I mean, we talked about the fact of 
the, you know, recognize the, sh- the sight lines and the shooting lines and recognize, you know, the elevated cord and all the different things that were going on with it. I mean, we talked about it. So it was it, that that's kind of the unfortunate part that I, uh, you know, Indiana doesn't really get that opportunity. You see Kentucky every year, they go play Gonzaga or they go play somebody in an, in an arena like that. Michigan State does the same thing. Duke does the same. Heck, Duke plays half their preseason games up in that Charlotte and those areas up there. And so it's just that's, – that's one of the things I think Indiana misses out on. And if Indiana gets to the point where they're ranked in the top 20, you know, all year long, year after year, I think that will put the pressure on the game that it'll, it'll have to come back. Plus, first of all, financially – everybody's going to be hurting when we're coming off this coronavirus situation. If anything's going to speed up the process of playing that game sooner rather than later, obviously it's going to be a big money maker for both schools. And I can definitely see that as a, as a way, a reason why it might trump his ego it might be the only thing that trumps Calipari's ego in that scenario. I think you're spot on. Heck that was the first game or that game was the first time in my life that I ever, uh, I ever went out of my own pocket to get a limousine to go from uh, <laughs> from Bloomington up to the Hoosier Dome. We, we, we made a day out of it. You know, I, I think my parents had rented a limo for like a high school dance or something for us when we all chipped in. But that was the first limo I ever bought out of pocket because uh, we we had court side seats. You know how they used to cram it into the side there and they went right. from uh, side, side to side across. We were in those bleachers that were, you know, probably on the, the 30, 40 yard line. Right. Um, Real tall. But that was that was an event you marked on the calendar as soon as the date got published, you know, maybe a year in advance. Uh, everybody was going to be there and the, the electricity in the building. And I love the campus series. Don't get me wrong. But I think you're right. That was that felt like a, a at least a regional final type environment every single yeah. year they played there, no matter how strong each team was, respectively. Yeah. You know, that that reminds me of uh, John Favreau's character in uh, uh, Rudy. We got Angelo Pizzo on after you today, but uh, that kind of reminds me. I can, you know, he when he came back to when Rudy was going to play the car, the guy, basically a limo. But right, he got the limo, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see Chronic rolling up with the crew. With a big leather coat a big, or a big fur coat on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have the, uh, did you have the I, fur I, coat? I think- I was wearing a starter jacket at the time, I'm pretty sure, and uh, I can guarantee you when that limousine crossed uh, crossed West Street coming into Indianapolis, uh, we were definitely hanging out the sunroof at that point. <laughs> hey, one As thing we that rolled by the Red Garter. One thing, that interview with, uh, oh, there's free Red Garter pub there. Uh, <laughs> what, one thing that the Calipari interview gave me that I can use, I, I'm going to use this from now on, is anytime I get backed into a, a conversation I don't want to be in, I'm just going to say, oh, hey, my, my guys, my guys are going to freak out when they hear I'm having this conversation right now. I mean, he referred to his guys as his Oh, you talking about Calipari? Yeah, Calipari. <laughs> oh, my, my people, no, my people, my people yeah, are going to freak people. out. So uh, my, my people are, I, my, my people are going to come into play a lot more often now on. Yeah, that's Con- a charity. I'll do it for charity. Con, you've been bouncing around, uh, keeping uh, the peeps uh, in, around Bloomington, uh, the local uh, foodie, fooderies, uh, in uh, doing some good work uh, this week. See a lot of guys out there helping them out. Uh, where you head anywhere today, by chance? Uh, you know, we just did a quick breakfast at the house. Uh, I've I've got an abbreviated work schedule right now, so I've got my Tuesdays and Wednesdays off for the moment. Um, so we've been trying to uh, trying to cook for the kids when I'm home here. But I don't know, man. I'm uh, I'm eyeballing a couple options for lunch. I need to make some calls. The challenge right now, honestly, is uh, making sure that what was open last week is still going to be open today or uh, even tomorrow. Um, so it's, it's, it, reality kind of sets in real quick when a place you were just at is no longer there, uh, or at least no longer open. So, you know, like I've said it a hundred times, I'll keep saying it, man, we all got to eat. And I understand a lot of folks have, have got some anxiety as far as, uh, income and everything else. But, uh, you know, I continue to stress when you can, when you get the opportunity, try to share the love, keep it local. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, why don't you give love for some of the national places that are still open through this? You know, they employ local people here and they absolutely do. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, though, uh, I, I think it's important for people to keep in mind, not just now, but but it's, but always. Uh, but it's especially important now. Those local businesses, man, it's not just the employees, it's the profits. Uh, and I think it's we're going to have to start taking a hard look at doing everything we can to keep profits locally based as well, especially in a town like Bloomington, where so much of our revenue generally comes from outside of town. 
uh, ain't nobody coming into town right now to come save us, you know, to come come pay us. So we got to take care of our own. So keep that in mind uh, when folks are going out and making choices who you're supporting, because a lot of the places I'm eating at right now, a lot of places I'm shouting out. Uh, you know, they, they've sponsored my kids, little league teams, my soccer teams, you know, we've, we've collaborated in, in charitable efforts for business, uh, endeavors and things like that. It's, these are the people that make Bloomington as, as great as it is. And, and we got to support each other to make sure everybody pulls through this in the end together. Absolutely. No matter where you are, if you're in Evansville or Southern Indiana or Fort Wayne or Indy or Terre Haute, it doesn't matter. Do the same. Uh, please uh, keep keep helping. Let's help each other, man. We've seen a lot of that, though, and that's a great thing. Chronic, no, I can't that's, thank that's you. That's the cool thing about Hoosiers, man. Whenever uh, whenever there's something, you can always find them stepping up and coming out of the woodwork to take care of each other. So I think this is our time to shine, man. You got it. Chronic Cruiser, can't thank you enough, brother, as always. Look forward to doing it again next week. Stay safe. Thanks for having me, guys. Be well, fellas. See you, boss. There's Chronic Hoosier joining us. Hey, we've got uh, Angelo Pizzo coming up yet uh, from uh, the creator and writer of Hoosier. Speaking of Rudy and Rudy, speaking of the director of Rudy, speaking of that. So uh, maybe we can get Chronic as a part in that, uh, but <laughs> get the limo <laughs> back out. We're back with more uh, from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Coyle Leary, powered by Rivals, right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast, anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat.
Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, powered by our rivals. You know, we've talked about uh, this scene in so much like a movie. Well, I can't think of anyone better to talk about, talk to right now than Angelo Pizzo. Angelo, how are you, man? Hanging in and hunkered down. I'm telling you, there's not a lot to go on. But there's all this time. It should, it should give you all kinds of time for movie ideas. Well, I'm trying to keep focus, uh, trying to keep the energy up, the creative energy up. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard. I will say that I, I'm a little fortunate in so far as I'm working on four different projects. And that hasn't stopped. Uh, and primarily I work for my own anyway. And I'm at the screenplay stage of these four projects. Uh, two of them I'm supervising, two of them I'm writing. One of them was um, was going to go out for financing uh, about two weeks ago. So we've had to put that on hold. The unknown about our business, of course, is when is uh, when are we going to open up and when are we going to be able to shoot movies? But as far yeah. as development and... Uh, you know, making scripts from scratch or making them better, that, that's going on at a rapid pace. You can count on one thing. The business is going to be bigger than ever. That is, people are want to be entertained. They're going to want to watch films in whatever venue, streaming or in theaters. Um, probably people are dying to go to theaters, get out of their house. But, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate in that way. Yeah, and uh, that you're exactly right. They are going to be clamoring for for entertainment. They are right now. Uh, but it is, I guess maybe does this make it somewhat easier for you to actually work right now? Well, I mean, uh, the 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 pandemic, everything around me uh, affects me, and you know, I'm part of the uh, I'm part of the the community, the society that has to read and watch and see how our uh, fellow citizens are are suffering and uh you know it, it affects me I, I can't say that uh you know at my age that i don't have my own anxieties and fears about about uh, getting infected and what could happen to me so you know there's a, there's a there's a there's a part of of th- there's a, a general anxiety that i'm carrying around that doesn't really help me writing because I can get distracted so easily. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's easier. You know, I would say that I'm, you know, struggling in my own ways of dealing with, uh, you know, that the craziness that's going on <clears throat> around us. Um, I'm, I'm sure we all know somebody, you know, who's been affected by this in a very personal way. So, yeah, no, focus. Uh, focus is my biggest issue. You know, Todd, since your last visit with us, we were talking about a character in a project you were working on, kind of like a Chinese Rudy, and Todd has just been enamored with that ever since. And I've just, used the Chinese Rudy comment and, and reference uh, just hundreds of times since then. I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get enough of the Chinese Rudy. Well, now I'm wondering, does the Chinese Rudy get coronavirus? There's a whole new twist, plot twist. Oh, today. man. Uh, you know, first of all... <laughs> Um, we communicate with the real Chinese Rudy all the time. He's in Vancouver uh, and uh, lives there permanently. Uh, but um, remember, this is a this is a, a historical piece. It's it's in the past. It's already happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't listen. What we all want are happy endings. Yeah, everybody right. wants this <laughs> thing right. to turn out well. Well, we we certainly don't he want to end it. it with the coronavirus. Oh, he beats a, it. He beats it. It's, a, comes it's out like a it. horror show. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Angelo Pizzo just gave us the line that we're going to use for life. Everybody just wants a happy ending. That is, we're going with that forever. From now on. <laughs> That's a great one. Well, oh, what, hey, you know hey, what hey, happens I, if uh, you know? And Rudy, uh, guess what? He doesn't get on the field. Yeah, Nothing exactly. happens. <laughs> <laughs> good point. You know, good point. in Hoosiers, they miss that last shot. 
<laughs> Muncie Central or Winds or whatever that's, they name it. South Penn Central Winds. <laughs> that's a good point. That's, that's a good way to look at it. Uh, uh, Angelo, you'll enjoy this. I got a text into the show from Tim. says, we were driving through a neighborhood the other night, and a group of about 15 IU fans were drinking beer and had a big screen in the driveway watching the movie Hoosiers. They were all sitting about six feet apart, and they had a sign up said, honk once, and we will take a drink. Honk twice if you're a Hoosier fan. So, uh they, uh, they had that's a lot funny. of drink that night. So yeah, they had a good funny. time. Now, how are you guys feeling your hours? That's what I want to know. With no Angelo sports, Pizzo. I mean, with, the, with the Angelo Pizzos of the world. <laughs> yeah, right. You're reaching then. You're really <laughs> desperate. <laughs> as a, hey, as a, I'm as trying a, to fill ex- your sports talk show with the movie talk. That's right. As a, as a, as a I guess, expert in, in the entertainment business, or definitely within that circle, what is Angelo Pizzo? I mean, you know what? Dummies like us watch. We watch the Tiger King. What's Angelo Pizzo watch? On That's TV? a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> you know, I I watched I watched up to three episodes of the <laughs> That's Tiger all you can King, stomach. And, and, and I found those people so disgusting. And uh, you know, we're living in a <clears throat> in a kind of a world where things are not going well at all. Do I really want to spend more hours with these people? <laughs> yeah. I finally said I can't take it anymore. I'd had it. Yeah, just, quickly turns away. I would. I want to surround myself. I want to watch things that are. I wouldn't say uplifting, but with more interesting people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, hey, believe me. Episodes four through eight, you didn't miss anything. You you just saw the same thing over and over again, pretty much. I kept on. I thought. I you know. I read enough about it that I realized no, no re- big reveals were going to be happening, and and you know the story part of it. it, it it's like car wreck TV, and um, you know yeah, you can right. only watch a car crash so many times before it just becomes redundant. Have you ever done? Let me. Have let, you me ever... Can I, let me. Uh, uh, <clears throat> make an observation about how sports functions in my life, yeah. just because you are guys are a sports show. And that is one of the things that I realized <clears throat> that I missed was not so much watching sports, which I really don't do that much anymore. I'm not a big baseball fan. Like I used to be, I never really watched hockey or, or pro football all that much. And of course, I watch college basketball a lot, and the the tournament <clears throat> I miss quite a bit. But what I miss is talking about it. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had discussions with friends about the I, IU basketball, IU football, recruiting, um, and, and there's always something going on, and and, and some series of discussions uh, to be had with those. I used to, uh, in back in the normal world used to check on peaks probably 10 or 15 times a day. Now it's like once or twice. And now, you know, we, you can only talk about Logan Duncan so long, you know, <laughs> then you run out of same things to say. Right. So, yeah, that t- I find that a big hole in my life, just talking about sports. And the other sport was is golf, of course. Todd, you know that. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, talking to my son and my friends, about the you know the majors like I really miss the masters, um, no. so yeah that's uh, and I don't listen to you guys quite as much as I used to. I'm say I'm sorry to say <laughs> that's disappointing to hear. Uh, <laughs> do you play do you, do you play golf much yourself, Angelo? I don't. Uh, you know all of my time that I used to have for golf, I, I spent uh, you know watching my son in tournaments. So I think oh, uh, right. last that's summer. Right. I may have walked 27 rounds on golf courses, but I was never playing. I was always watching my son compete. Speaking of golf courses, the last time I, I think I physically saw you, no, I was at the basketball games, but I saw you back when the Indiana dedicated their new golf course, which is still yet to really get opened up. Uh, this Actually, it's I guess this is kind of benefit for the course. It's allowing it to grow more right now, but what a spectacular course that, that thing is. It's a beautiful course, and um, I did something you're not supposed to do. It's illegal. There's signs up everywhere. Only we won't tell anyone. Indian we University tell anyone. personnel allowed in this this area, the space. But I walked all 18 holes last week, and the, it's beautiful. I mean, the, it, the, you're right. The fact that there hasn't been any play has helped 
uh, let the grass grow in. And, uh, yeah, it's stunning. It's just a, a stunning course. Todd's been doing a lot of walking, playing golf. Uh, it's, uh, heck, he's only used a cart once, I think, so far. I have. I've walked out here at the point many, many rounds already. But uh, I, I've uh, actually, I'll admit to the same thing. I walked this course last week as well. So, uh, <laughs> isn't that it, nice, Todd? Oh, you know, it's unbelievable. It is compared to what that you know that was one of the things, one of the facilities at Indiana uh, that that probably lacked more than anything was the golf course. I mean, it just was not the caliber of, uh, of what golf courses are in other big, especially Ohio state and Purdue. Um, and man, they, they came back and, and put themselves in the ball game now. Cause that is a well, legit course. That course, uh, the Indiana course, uh, the old course was rated 14 out of 14 of the big 10 golf courses. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that'll, that'll give you a perspective. And it's it pro- it probably, probably still overrated at that point. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, amazing. Hey, Angelo, have you ever done, have you ever uh, written or produced uh, the year? You can see I'm novice in saying this, but have you ever written or produced a documents documentary or a docu series or anything like that? No, I haven't, but um, I have been asked to consult on, on a few um, I, I, and I have, but I, it's a totally different kind of format and skill set, um, to accumulate how you accumulate, how you, uh, the, uh, the, the footage, how you put it together, how much, when, how you write the script. And of course the art and the skill is in the editing room when you take this massive amount of, uh, footage and, and craft it into, uh, you know, whatever, uh, number you whether it's a two hour or you know w- one of the things i just uh i just watched was the aaron Her- hernandez netflix docu series yeah. i think yeah, there I were two or three that was fascinating horrifying yeah. i agree i agree a thousand i watched that myself a while back it was amazing Did it. yeah i mean no. talk about who knew you know the secret life that the people have it's it was stunning just absolutely stunning and the one thing I haven't gotten to watch yet that Todd has is the uh, the, the document the documentary the on HBO, the scheme uh, on college basketball. Have you watched that? Yes, I think that's on Showtime. Um, it's HBO. on HBO, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but except actually, I'm not. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've read so much about it, I feel like I've already seen it. Yeah, I hear you. Man. Everybody so says uh, after watching is why does Will Wade still have a job? It's unbelievable. Uh, I've been it saying really it all is. along. It's, it, it's, crazy. it's pretty amazing. Yep, we'll certainly find out. Well, Angela, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy, busy day to join us today. I'm just kidding. I'm not uh, no, that I, busy. I'm, I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you have four more projects you're working on than I do. I can yeah. assure you of that. <laughs> And, and Always you know, a pleasure, the, guys. And, and those projects, me and Tom were talking earlier. We're we're we, we're looking to be in a movie. So anytime you need to put uh, yeah, some, some, some extra, stupid TV you guys know, in there, some fat we're old in the movie. guys. All right. No yeah, can you uh, wear a fireman's co- costume, a fire, fireman's outfit, uh, turn of the century, like nineteen oh five? Hey, I I can ride horses, man. I'm I'm there. <laughs> okay, you got it. <laughs> All right, buddy. And so thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you so much. Hey, thank you. Appreciate you it. Betcha. Talk See to you later. later. Angelo Pizzo, one of the greats, uh, producer, director, Hoosiers, Rudy, a mile American, uh, lives right here in Bloomington. Uh, just yeah, I mean, my, my, kinda cool. my, my kind of my lead up and point into asking him those questions is, you know, there's got to be a some documented, I'm going to call it a documentary or a series on Coach Knight. I don't know that it's a movie. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I don't know that, I don't know what the, what the plot line would be, I guess. He, I guess those guys would come up with that, but man, there's got to be, there's no better person to do a documentary nope. or any kind of series about Bob Knight and, you know, IU and Bloomington any better than, I mean, if he needs funding, he calls Cuban <laughs> and when he, he's got all the information, he's right here. I mean, we could throw this thing together in a week. Uh, you know what? I think you should, I, I wish I would have let you suggest that to him. I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know. Th- in, in the amount of time that we have here in a day, I mean, I think we could have this entire, you know, okay. eight part series wrapped up in a week. It's an idea factory now. It can't be. It can't be. A, it can't be an issue. I'm spitballing right now. I'm just. I'm going to come up with a, a mood board here in a little bit. I'll, he's I'll gonna, gonna, some, by the time we come back tomorrow, he's already going to have a screenplay. He's going to have all the <laughs> actors laid out. We'll be yep. ready. It'll be amazing. Okay. I'm going to submit it and see if I can get uh, Angelo to read my 
screenplay. There, I, you know what? Just kind of slip it to him. Hey, yeah, uh, you want to yeah. read this? Hey, <laughs> hey you know. Uh, yep, I mean, well, you've got nothing else to do because it's too cold out there. No golf today for anybody. It's unless they're brave. That's for sure. It's a uh, it's chilly day out there, but. Uh, I guess we'll figure out something to do until we're back tomorrow. Looking forward to tomorrow, though. Uh, your old buddy Cam Cameron on with us tomorrow. I love Coach Cameron. He Look, is, he said hi to Todd the other day when I was talking great. to him. So looking he's forward great. to that. He was. Uh, I asked him come on. He's, yeah, looking forward to chopping it up with you guys. That's exactly what he said. I'm like, chopping I, it I, up. I love that phrase. I got. I got to start instituting that a little bit more often. We're gonna chop it up. Chop, El Chapo tomorrow. El Chapo, chop factory. Chop out. Well, man, thanks a lot to everybody. We can't thank uh, Taylor Lehman enough, Chronic Hoosier, and, of course, Angelo Pizzo. But most importantly, thank you guys uh, for coming along as you do every day. We appreciate it and hope uh, we keep doing it. We'll be back tomorrow, like I said, uh, on the program. Cam Cameron, former Hoosier coach and a lot, coach a lot of other places. Todd, hope you have a great day. And you Jake too. as well. Same to you folks. Until tomorrow, I will see you on the radio.